What's well, everyone? It's Matt Morozik, and this will be, uh, I guess, the third video I'm doing about the Frozen Transform DLP printer that I just received uh, that me and my buddy Floyd bought together. So, um, if you follow me on Facebook, you've seen a bunch of photos I've been posting. I have a lot of fun with this thing. Um, printing. So, I did the very first thing I printed was a rook about that size, and actually dropped it and broke it the other day, unfortunately. So, <laughs> I downloaded a smaller rook right here along with this Baby Yoda, Santa Yoda file. And um, I printed those together about the same size as this Rook. I don't have the Baby Yoda here anymore. I actually gave that to a family member who really liked it. I was like, you can go, go and have it because I made a big one. So uh, here's the little Rook right here. These took about this and the little Baby Yoda, the, the mini Baby Yoda took three hours to print. And the Baby Mini Yoda looked fabulous. Um, this guy looks really good. I'm still getting vertical lines and that's just because I'm learning how to use a printer and as part of it is the DLP, it's the pixels. Um, and here is the larger Baby Yoda. Now there are a few errors in the print and that's due to user error and not the printer. Um, the, 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 the first one, the main one obviously is that it's missing the ball, the fuzz, the fuzz ball on the hat. And that's because when I was printing there were no supports for it so it printed and never attached. And then another one is on the bottom of the ear here, and that could have been a user error or a printer error. Basically, the supports for, for this ear failed, and um, um, this bottom part of the ear didn't print correctly. Luckily, the print's not a failure because this was a 25-hour print. Um, so this is an easy fix, a little bit of putty and sanding, and I can just put a ball of putty on there and re-sculpt the ball, and that's easy. So but about maybe 15, 20 minutes of, of putty work, and the print is saved. So um, I tried to download Cheat2Box and unfortunately there's a compatibility I issue with Cheat2Box and the computer I'm running. I'm going to see if I can resolve that. I'm not sure what it is to be honest. Um, I downloaded the latest version of Cheat2Box, but it could just be that my machine is too old. Um, so everything I've been printing has been in the PZ, the PZ slicer, the frozen slicer software. and. Um, it's not real hard. It's pretty, it's, it took me a little while to kind of figure out the controls and stuff. Um, I feel it's a little limiting as far as the settings you can do. Um, it's, it's, it's not, and so far, from what I can tell, it's not the greatest software, but it's been getting the job done. And one area where I know I can improve is the print resolution. So in the PZ Slicer software, it gives you two options, a 0 0.05 millimeters, which I believe is 50 microns and then 0 0.07 millimeters, which I believe is 70 microns. I think that's the, I'm still learning resolution on micron term, terminology. I've been told that I can print down to 25 microns, which would be twice the resolution of this print. So if I was able to do this print at 25 microns, it would have been a 50 hour print. And yes, I could have, I, I still have to learn how to cut and key, key, uh, key models, but I just wanted, to, I really like that little baby Yoda file so I just basically maxed this out to the print uh, bed as big as I could I orientated and orientated him in a way that took up as much width and uh, depth as the build plate would allow which resulted in this guy which is right at 11 and a quarter inches tall so if I was to give this guy a, actually this the scale is 0.7 um, of the actual size so almost three quarter scale of the actual baby Yoda uh, the research I found out is Baby Yoda on the Mandalorian is 16 inches tall. This guy's 11 and a quarter, which puts him at 0.7 or almost three quarter scale Baby Yoda. So I can almost print a full size Baby Yoda on this on this uh, transform, which is pretty impressive. If his, if both arms were down, I could have printed a full size Yoda in one in one shot because I have the height. Um, uh, uh, well, if I didn't have the hat. It would have been just under full size because you can do you can do 15.75 inches tall so it would have been just under so backing up without the hat and without the arm outstretched you could probably just about print a full size yoda baby yoda on the transform so um another area that the pz slicer software i can tell right away even though i'm a noob one second please so another area i can tell where the pz slicer software is a little lacking is in supports the, the support area and I just used the auto supports and so when I generated auto supports it didn't have any for the the fuzz ball or not enough for this ear but I had a ton of supports everywhere else so 
I do feel like a lot of resin was wasted on supports, but again, I'm a noob. I'm just, I just did the auto support feature and um, just kind of let it do its own thing. And I got a lot of comments. Well, you should go in there and edit the supports and stuff. Like, yes, I know. I, I'm, I need to learn how to do that. So <laughs> again, um, I just wanted to see how big I could make this little file that I liked on the frozen, how long it would take and what kind of, what kind of results I could get. So for a first large print, um, I think the results are pretty amazing. Now, anyone who's been 3D printing for a while probably goes like, ah, there's some issues here and there. Uh, there are some print artifacts, um, nothing major. Um, in my opinion, um, there are some print layers you can see here and there, like on the back of the ears. There's like one layer right here that I can kind of see maybe got a little misaligned. But um, in my opinion, this is actually a really good print for a first run. Um, I think basically all this needs is once I get the, the fuzz ball reattached and the ear fixed, uh, one good coat of primer um, and maybe a, just a little bit of sanding on the face and he's ready to paint. Um, I don't, there's like, in, where all the texture and stuff is, you don't see any print lines um, because it, you know, if there are there, you can't see them because it's all hidden in the texture. So let's come in a little closer on them. And I'm not sure if you'll see, but it looks really, really good. Um, so initially I tried to wash them in mean green. Um, I don't think I did it long enough. I don't have enough. I only bought one gallon. I should have probably bought two or three gallons. It's only like less than $6 a gallon. And I should have just put them in there and agitated them longer. Because so I put them in there and I, then I tried to cure them and it was a little tacky. So today what I did is I, I re-rinsed them in some alcohol with a brush and then rinse them with soap and water, and he feels much better. So I just don't think I cleaned him enough. Um, so it's resin, but it, feel, it, almost, it almost sounds like vinyl. Um, he is hollow, by the way. Um, so part of the problem with uh, not being able to use Chi2 box is hollowing the model out because PZ Slicer does not have that option. If it does, I don't know where it is. So a good buddy, or not a good buddy, I should say uh, one of the members on the groups, Omar, has been super helpful in just answering questions. And he actually PM'd me. He's like, hey, if you need anything, let me know. And uh, I was talking about having a problem with Chitu Box. I sent him the file. He hollowed it and sent it back to me. And I, I started the print. So exactly just right at 25 hours to get this guy at 0 0.05 millimeters, um, which I believe is 5 micron or uh, 50 microns. Um, I think that's right. I think that's the right terminology um, to get this guy. And I'm super happy with him. So I am going to um, save it. I'm not going to, I mean, it's, I think it's a good print. Um, obviously it would have been better if the puff ball would have been there and the ear would have fully printed. But for the most part, I'm super happy with this and he's super cute. So this is off of um, Thingiverse. I'll put the link down below to where I got this file. So if you want to download it and print it yourself, you can. Now the, the, the original file is only about that big, um, about as big as this rook, maybe a little smaller. And what I was really impressed with, I wish I still had the mini here, which I was really impressed with the mini print is that where the ears are right here on the mini, it's paper thin. You can see through the resin and it printed it perfectly. Um, really, really nicely detailed in the mini. Um, so it's a cute little guy. So I print, got this guy printed just in time for Christmas. Um, what else can I say? Oh, how much resin did this use? This used right at two bottles of resin, maybe a tad more. Um, but I'd say two bottles, um, which may be a lot. Um, I've been looking at resins and look, watching a bunch of YouTube videos on resins. I think the frozen resin that comes with this is, oh, I was just looking, I thought maybe I broke one of the sooner nails. I didn't, <laughs> it's just not super sharp. Um, I think the frozen resin, I think my research is about $35 a bottle. Um, I do want to try some other resin. Um, Uncle Jesse mentioned, I think it's called Ceratech. Ceratech, I can't remember the, the brand name, but it's their like quick setting resin um, and it's not supposed to smell as bad. And that's only, you get two bottles for $30. So it's like half the price. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same quantity, but it seems less expensive. Now, he was saying that it being quick cure, that's like, it's not that much faster. Maybe, maybe 10% faster. But you know, if you're doing a long print like this, five, you know, 25 hours, 10% is two and a half hours. That makes a big difference. So. Uh, so back to my printer, just to go over the printer settings again, this was the, um, frozen resin. Let me get it for you real quick. This is 
of the resin. It's just what came with the printers, the fro and they just call it frozen resin, ABS like matte gray. Um, now it says here that the um, XY resolution is 0 0.05 millimeters and the Z resolution is 0 0.03 to 0 0.05. I did a 0 0.05 so I could go down to 0 0.03. So I, what I need to do is learn how to, I guess I just use a default setting in the printer. So I need to set up um, a, a profile for this resin in the printer at 0 0.025 for the layer height. Um, which also means I have to, in, I think I have to change my exposure time for the layers. Um, so, so the resin I used is the frozen ABS light matte gray. Uh, the initial exposure time for the base layers was, I believe, 60 seconds for the first like 10 layers. Um, he was supported completely on the bottom, you can see here. So he was not printed flat. He was all supported around here off the printer. There were supports going up to the center and right in here. Um, so I think the first 10 layers were at 60 seconds to get that base exposure down. Every layer after that was a seven, a seven second exposure. So I also think maybe if i would have gone to an eight second exposure that would have had um part of the tackiness could have been the exposure time i could maybe need to increase that a little bit for such a big print on the little guys they did seven seconds and they're hard, not tacky at all um but so it's either exposure time or it's just the fact i didn't rinse them enough and I, my inclining is i didn't wash them enough since i don't have a um uh, ultrasonic cleaner this big to get one this big would be crazy expensive um I just put them in a bucket of that mean green and kind of slosh them around for a few minutes. Um, now I've heard mean green is a really good alternate alternative alternative to um, um, IPA because uh, I was looking at IPA and it's like four thirty five dollars a gallon, where the mean green is less than six dollars a gallon. So if I can do the mean green and a lot of people are saying to use it, that's what I'm going to do. I just need to get a big bucket of it and some brushes and stuff for big prints like this. I had a lot of comments on Facebook. Well, you should have cut them in pieces to do shorter print times and stuff. It's like, yes, I could have done that if I knew how to do it right now. But the whole goal of this print was to see how big I could make this file and how long it would take. That was my whole purpose of this. My end game wasn't to try to print a, a baby Santa Yoda as quickly as I could. I just want to see how big I could make this thing on the printer, what it looked like. Um, for initial first big print so i mean this, this printer does from what i can tell it's going to be really really good you know i'm a complete noob at this and i think i'm getting really good results for have never do, doing this before um asking a lot of questions everyone's really open to sharing and helping me out so big props to everyone who's answered any of my facebook posts or anything like that i really appreciate the the help and information uh, a lot of positive feedback on this guy. Like, like a lot of people are like, oh, I want to get a Baby Yoda now or Baby Santa Yoda. Um, it, as far as I know, it's not kosher to download things off a of Thingiverse, print them and sell them. I wouldn't do that anyway. Um, you know, maybe I'd make one or two for like friends, but I just don't think it's... The, the files are there for people to use for, for themselves, for personal projects. Like I wouldn't print this, mold it and cast it and sell it. That's just, to me, that's stealing. Even though the files are free, I wouldn't do that. That's... That's taking advantage of someone taking the time to, to sculpt something and put it up to Thingiverse for us hobbyists to do for fun. So, super excited. Uh, my buddy Floyd's got a file that he's trying to get to me to print. And um, I'm going to see if he got that back today. Because um, yeah, he this is part, you know, he owns half this printer. So, I need to get something, start some printing some stuff that he wants uh, for himself. But uh, this would basically just a test. How big can I go with this little baby Yoda and how will it look? So... The, major, the, 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 the main print artifact you can see is right here in the eye. You can see some print layers. really don't feel them, but you can see them. And then I see a little bit um, on the back of this ear. It's, it's, it's there a little bit. don't think it's too bad. You can see right here I have one layer. Or it's just, and it's not even through the whole layer. It's just right there in the ear where it got, you know, it's like a little ridge for some reason. So... Um, I know a lot of guys are saying, well, the form, you know, uh, but in my Gary, it's like, oh, with the form too, you don't get any lines. If I see lines, I kind of get upset. And that may be the case with an SLA. You're probably not going to get as many lines, um, but you got to look at the price too. This is a sub $2,000 printer and right out of the gate, I'm getting results like this for, and never having done this before. So um, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the purchase. So, um, 
yeah, pretty cool. So really excited. So there you go. There's my first, I'm gonna call it large print off of the uh, Frozen Transform uh, DLP printer. That's baby Santa Yoda, just in time for Christmas. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. It's Matt Rosick. catch you guys next time, bye.